Hi, today's lesson is measuring distance with a 30 centimeter ruler. In order to measure distance with a 30 centimeter ruler, you need to know these six things. Number one, rulers have two scales, inches and centimeters. Number two, the scale does not start at the end. Number three, metric system is easy because every measurement is a multiple of 10. Number four, inches are larger than centimeters by 2.54. Number five, the precision of the ruler is plus minus 0.1 centimeters. And the last one, the sources of error. There's the tool source, the object itself, the procedure, how you measure it, human error, and error in reporting. So, we'll start from number one. Rulers have two scales. Centimeters on one side, and inches on the other. They're not the same. When using a ruler, it's important to understand that the ruler does not start at the end. It always starts a little bit in. And that's because over time, the end of the ruler gets worn down. And also when you make the ruler, it's difficult to put the first line right on the edge. So rulers always start a little bit in. Now let's go to the end of the ruler. Rulers, like this one, are not 30 centimeters, they're actually 30 and a half. And once again, the ruler, the end of the ruler is not counted, the 30 and a half stops short of the end of the ruler. Consider measuring a dollar bill. If we were to measure it from the end of the ruler, the dollar bill is 15.12, about 15.2 centimeters long. However, that's not how long it is. The proper way to measure something is you line up the object with the very first line. Then, let's look at the end again, and notice this dollar bill is 15.5 centimeters long. Again, here is the 15 centimeter mark. Each one of these are tenths. One, two, three, four, five. The dollar bill measures 15.5 centimeters long. Okay, the metric system is easier than the English system because the metric system is everything divided by 10. Consider this dollar bill. I'm measuring it with the English system. These are inches, so one, two, three, four, five, six, but notice it's a little bit longer, okay? So this would be six, one, and one more of these lines. These are sixteenths. So this bill is very close to six and two sixteenths, or six and one eighth. That is not really easy to think about off the top of your head. Now let's do it again using the metric system. Again, we line up the bill on the line, and the metric system is much easier because everything is multiples of 10. So here we go. One centimeter is 10 millimeters. There are 10 lines here. Everything is multiples of 10. So we'll just count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and each of these lines are tenths. So 15, and there are 5 tenths, 15.5 centimeters. As you can see, the metric system is much easier to use because everything is a multiple of 10. Notice I have two scales. The top ruler is in inches and the bottom ruler is in centimeters. Notice when we're measuring, we always start with the zero line, which is a little bit in from the end of the ruler. Inches are larger, but how much larger? Well, let's take a look. Here's one inch. One inch is about one, two and a half centimeters. 
two and a half centimeters fit into every inch. So this dollar bill is 15.5 inches, excuse me, centimeters, which is about six, one, two, three, no, six and three-eighths inches. Here are three rulers that are commonly used in classrooms. Let's talk a little bit about the precision of each ruler. This is a plastic ruler, here's a wood ruler, and here's a meter stick. First thing you'll notice is their different thicknesses. The plastic ruler is the thinnest, then the wood ruler, then the meter stick. The thicker the ruler, the more error you'll have while viewing it. Now let's talk about the materials that the rulers are made of. These are made from wood, which are stamped with an ink stamping process. The plastic ruler is a molded process. The molded process will usually give you a more uniform and higher precision tool. Also, the plastic, because it's thinner, will give you less of an, of an error reading it. All of these rulers have a precision of plus minus 0.1. You read it to the nearest little line, which are called millimeters. The problem you'll find with a plastic clear ruler is evident as soon as I slide it off of this paper. It's very, very hard to see black lines against a black lab table. So that's an obvious disadvantage with a plastic ruler. Just like the wood rulers, you read a plastic ruler not from the end, but from the first line. So there are differences in the precision of the measuring tool. And just like buying a car, the more expensive the tool, the greater the precision will be. You expect these lines to be the same on each of these tools, but they won't be. They'll be close, but they won't be the same. So one more time, the precision of the ruler depends on the quality of its manufacturer. Now we're going to talk about the sources of error. When you're using a ruler, the first source is the tool. Each tool will have a different precision depending upon the quality of its manufacturer. The next source of error is the object itself. Any two objects are not the same size. They're close, but they're not the same size. The next source of error we'll talk about is the procedure, how you use the tool. Then we'll talk about human error, that's how you read the tool. And finally, we'll talk about reporting error, how you talk about your measurement. The first source of error we're going to talk about is the tool itself. You have a wood meter stick, you have a metal meter stick, wood 30 and a half centimeter ruler, and plastic 30 and a half centimeter ruler. The more you spend on the measuring device, usually the better it is. On each of these, one centimeter is very, very close. However, the farther away you get on down the scale, the error will increase. If you put one of these on top of the other one, they will not measure exactly the same.